I started voicing the audio portion of my book, and it's really interesting because as I am recording it, I'm really not consuming what it's saying, which is quite interesting because I'm literally, tr- literally trying to just stay on a specific pace and just get it done, right? It's fun, it's exciting, and I think it's shouldn't say this, but it's going to be better than the physical book because I'm going on tangents and it's a lot of uh, just randomness that makes it better. Um, And so it's been fun. But there's something in the introduction of the book that made me remember um, a scenario that I feel like a lot of people go through. A lot of people will complain or worry about who exactly they should reach out to. And so when I first got into the business world after my journalism world or media, my first media world, I was not only a nobody, but I had zero connections that were from the media world, the journalism world to now to the business world. This is around 2010. And I sit there and I go, okay, what can I do? And so I thought about, okay, here are all my connections on one side of the world. Here are all my connections on the other side of the world. And by world, I mean like media world, journalism world, and business world. And there was one connection that was on both. And it was Danny Rubin. You guys have heard him on the show here before. And just an all-around good guy. His family has a public relations firm in the city that I live in. And so I reached out to them. And it didn't necessarily, like, I didn't get business from them, but they took the meeting, and it was that first one. It was like a practice run, and it really helped. And we've continued to have a great relationship over the last, I don't know, decade or so. And you just have to start, though, right? You have to figure out where those connections are. And so now something that I'll call the Fraternity of Podcast Guests, it's basically your alumni network, your um, the people that you have that... You have ties to your friends, your friends, friends, your friends, 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 right? If you go to LinkedIn, it'll say, who are you connected to? And it'll say the ones, right? So think of the uh, fraternity of podcast guests as the people who are like your number twos or your ones on LinkedIn. It's the connections of the connections. It's the people that are, that are associated with you in some sort of form, whether you've talked to them before or not. And so you can always use and leverage that in to get you at least to that first, hey, we have some sort of common ground. It's the seven layers or whatever of Kevin Bacon, right? You can always get to someone. And what I think is important is that we we don't leverage that low-hanging fruit. We don't leverage those relationships that we have. We don't leverage and think about the conversations that can be had because we have a relationship with someone else, right? And so as you're thinking... Well, who am I going to connect with? Who do I talk to? Well, take a, an inventory of the people that you already know. Find the people that you want to talk to and connect the dots. If you don't know on that second side of it who to talk to, look through your already existing contacts and see who they're in contact with and reach out. So I came up with this idea several years ago. I call it the fraternity of podcast guests. It could be the sorority of podcast guests. It could just be the alumni of podcast guests. I don't know. I just called it that because it sounded catchy. But think about a podcast that you like. Maybe you've been on a specific show. Super duper. And the show that you've been on has a series of other guests. Let's say it's had 100 guests and you were one of them. That means there's 99 other guests that have been on that show that you can then reach out to and be like, hey, I was also on XYZ podcast, XYZ radio show, XYZ uh, in XYZ publication. It doesn't have to be a podcast. It can be anything. I went to WVU. I went to wherever university. You did too. And that's the connection. That's how I got my first job out of college. The person who hired me was like, oh, I have ties to Morgantown. Wow, that's interesting. Right? So... Always try to connect with people that have some sort of similarity and hopefully in something that they love too because then you can really connect there, right? Most people that went to Morgantown, which is what I call West Virginia University, that pretty little school that you see behind me if you're seeing this on video, 
most people, if you can find people and connect with them on something that they love, it's going to be, that's going to be your bread and butter, bread and butter icebreaker. It can be super powerful. So instead of trying to just meet people to meet people by going to networking events and be like, oh, what should I do? Who do I meet? Yada, yada, yada. Like be more strategic about it. Figure out who you, the type of person that you want to connect with. Leverage the people that you already have in your network and see where those connections go, right? I believe that you can build stronger relationships that way than just hoping that a networking event that you go to each and every week or each and every month is just going to somehow magically give you the results that you want. Yes, networking events work as well, but by leveraging common grounds, I believe you have a stronger chance of creating that lifelong relationship that I talk about almost each and every episode here. I think it's just more powerful. So fraternity podcast guest is simply put your alumni taking advantage of the people that you already have in your network in some form, connecting with them and leveraging that common ground to introduce yourself to get to that next step. And that's it. Super simple concept. And if you use it, good things can happen. Thanks for listening. You're listening to Zach Miller Says.